Okay, so I'm hosting a huge party tonight, and I already went to the grocery store, spent a lot of money on soda and chips, but I forgot the main thing that chips go with. Salsa. But I don't have any time left to go back to the grocery store, and I don't have any money left to buy salsa. And I'll be perfectly honest, I don't think anyone wants salsa that has preservatives in it, that doesn't look good or taste good. But, you know, I'm not going to panic. You see, for three years I've been making salsa. And today, I'm going to teach you how to make salsa too. You need a cutting board and a knife. The knife should not be something that you cut dinner with or have at dinner time. And it should not be something that you cut bread with. But any knife other than those is fine. I personally use the chef knife because it's easy to use, easy to see what I'm doing. You'll also need a bowl to put everything in. And for this demonstration, I'm using four little bowls. But in reality, when you make it, you can just use the one big one. You'll also need tomatoes. Four to five tomatoes is a good size of salsa for the house. But if you're making it for a party, you're going to need more. There are different types of tomatoes, but I use the one with the vine because if I don't use all them, I can put them back in the refrigerator and they last a little bit longer. Also keep in mind that the redder they are, the more juice and flavor they have in them. One onion. There are two different types of onions. There's white onions and red onions. Red onions have more of a zing and are a little bit spicier than the white ones. And white ones aren't as spicy, but I use the white ones anyway. Really, it's your preference and your call. One jalapeno pepper, a bundle of cilantro, and garlic salt. First, you're going to want to start with the tomato. Take off the stem. Then, cut it in half diagonally. Now, you're going to also want to make a V cut. So you can get rid of the top of this part. You get rid of that. Then take the one half of the tomato and cut it down lengthwise. And keep going until you get to the end. Grab a piece and cut it vertically. Then horizontally. Now there are many different ways to cut tomatoes. You can submerge it in boiling water and then put it in ice water so the skin comes off. Or you can take out the seeds right here the stuff right here. Uh, most people do that so that your salsa isn't watery, but I tend to leave it there because it lasts a little bit longer, plus it has a fresher taste. Okay, so we're done with the tomatoes. This is about four tomatoes worth. Now we're on to the onions. First off, take, you know, first layer off, cut this, the top, and then the bottom. When you cut it, you can see where the first layer starts, just so you don't want to get like something that doesn't have a lot of flavor in it. So you just take off the first layer. Then, most of the time I use, I cut a half of one, half an onion. Just in case you guys forgot, onions are the vegetable that make you cry. So there are tricks you can use to make you stop crying. You can chew gum or you can put milk under your eyes. I personally don't recommend the latter one just because it gets messy to clean up afterward. So anyway, I cut it semi in half. I don't really need a whole like half an onion. My family doesn't really like that many onions in the salsa. So I don't usually cut that much. So like you did with the tomato, you're going to cut in one direction and then the other direction. The good thing about onions is that it already comes in layers in case if you could see that it comes in layers so even if you don't cut it precisely it doesn't really matter. Okay so we're done with the onions. Um, I cut a little bit more from the onion, not that much, but it'll make something along this line, this size. Next we have the jalapeno. Unfortunately, when I was filming before, the video camera cut me off, so basically you're going to want to cut your jalapeno in half, and then you're going to cut it in strips like this. I use half a jalapeno just because um, the people I usually make it for don't really like it that spicy, 
I'm gonna get up for this next part. So anyway, you cut the jalapeno like you did for the onions and the tomatoes. Um, but there's an, another part. You wanna cut it like this, like chops. Really, really fine chops. Okay, so we're done with the jalapenos. Um, I said half, and this is what half looks like. It's not that much, but spicy enough anyway. Next is the cilantro. You're going to want to cut it diagonally, so then you do the same thing you do with all the other stuff, including the jalapeno. I bundle it up and cut one direction, and then I cut the other direction. This time it's not bundled up so much. I make mine really fine, and now your cilantro is done. Not that much, but if you want more later on, you can just chop it later on and add more. Next, you have combining everything. You have your tomatoes, onions, your jalapenos, and then you have your cilantro. The reason I didn't have any spoons is a material you need for salsa making is because you can easily use your knife. Next you need garlic salt. You sprinkle it on. You kind of need a lot because the tomato kind of soaks up the taste. Same with what the jalapenos do and the onions. Last but not least, before you do anything, you're going to want to wipe the edges. Assuming that the bowl you put everything in is going to be the bowl you put out for your guest. And here you have your salsa. See, it wasn't that hard to make, so there was really no need to worry. Sorry about all the random information in this instructional video, but hopefully it helped. Thanks for watching. Bye.